Good evening, I'm Bob Hunter. Welcome back to Hunter's Gatherings, live from the City Pulse newsroom. Federal Public Health Minister Carolyn Bennett said the other day that she intended to fight back against Alberta Premier Ralph Klein's assault on Medicare. Klein acts like he's only making an innocent suggestion, yet he's talking about revolutionizing the delivery of medical services in this country by creating a two-tier system by allowing more private care. Quote the health minister, the government has to stay in control to make sure, quote, people can't pay to get to the front of the line or go to a different kind of care, unquote. Now, I agree with the first statement, but I do not agree with the second. Rather than blocking Canadians from the right to choose a different kind of care, government should be expanding coverage to include alternative medicine, which is excluded right now. Thus, if you choose naturopathy or homeopathy as a means to address your health problems, you shell out from your own pocket unless you're plugged into a private plant. The exclusion of alternatives is wrong, 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 especially since it's been well established that these kinds of treatment can work wonders. So we're going to talk to a naturopath who is also a Bachelor of Science. And on the subject of illness, we shall also be talking about a nuclear power plant that's in crummy shape and how much it's likely to cost to fix it up. A lot more, I'll bet, than the provincial government hopes. Finally, we'll present an interview with one of Canada's best, most provocative and insightful writers, Linda McQuigg, talking about her book, It's the Crude Dude. First, let's talk health. My guest, Jean-Jacques Dugois of the True Star Health and Wellness Clinic, better known to his patients, including me, as JJ. Welcome aboard, JJ. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Now, we already have a two-tier system in the sense that we have the established medicine, which gets paid for by the taxpayers, mm -hmm. and then we have the alternative, some of which go back thousands of years, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the government uh, says, no, 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 uh, we won't help you if you choose the alternative medicine route. Mm -hmm. And I think, first of all, that we should get things straight, that the modern medicine is really the alternative of medicine and a lot of this other stuff is stuff that's been around for thousands of years um, and of course a lot of the diseases we have now are very modern things that just occurred since the industrial revolution but what's your take on why why this prejudice on the part of the government against alternative medicine um, it's uh, you know I think you, you could go back in history at the turn of the century there was um, a decision made in terms of what what were the practitioners of the end of the 21st of the 20th century um, there was botanical medicine, there was naturopathic doctors, there was homeopathic doctors, acupuncturists, and so on. And at the time, um, basically, there was a political decision made in the U.S. where a certain type of medicine um, became popular and became what was accepted as what is currently mainstream medicine. Okay. Um, you know, and um, uh, the, the alternative medicine kind of took a little bit of a dip, but started resurging in the 50s and the 60s. And um, right now, I think it's I think it's quite common. I think most people are familiar with you know a naturopathic doctor, a homeopath, a acupuncturist, chiropractor, osteopath, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, speaking of chiropractors, now they're the provincial government, the enlightened liberal provincial government that I had high expectations for in the medical realm turn around, one of the first things they do is they cut off uh, payments for people who are going to see their chiropractor. Now, what's your take on that? Well, you know, uh, it's, it's interesting because you speak to chiropractors and they're still trying to, you know, see how much it's going to affect their practice. Um, I think for the most part, a lot of people, it was just kind of a bit half and half, a little bit from OHIP and a little bit, you know, and that's covered on insurance. So uh, what we're hoping is that looks like a lot of more of it will go to insurance. The concern, though, is that once you risk your, you reach your maximum of insurance, and what do you do now? You know, how are people going to be paying out of pocket for this service? Yeah, I mean, so. but that summarizes the whole situation. Because I know from my own experience, I, I messed up my back in a parachute jump when I was a young man, and could hardly move for years, and then eventually went to a chiropractor. Yep. And and after treatment, uh, I mean, I'm up to the point now where maybe once a year I'll go see my chiropractor because that's just a sort of a little tune-up. Mm -hmm. And I, otherwise, I can carry a canoe. Although people who have been canoeing with me know that I don't do it very often. <laughs> but I have the technical capacity. And, and the point is that the guy fixed my back without having to go in there with a knife and chop me up into little pieces. Yeah. And yet the government pretends. Uh, everybody who's in complementary alternative medicine, CAM is what we refer to, the chiropractors, the naturopathic doctors, the osteopaths, and so on and so forth, is very sensitive to the fact that people are paying out of pocket. 
Um, you know, we're available. You know, we're we're um, uh, you know we're we we realize that you know our fees have to be paid by check or Visa or Mastercard yes. versus the OHIP card. Okay, hold that hold that thought because we'll get into that in a, in a moment. And right now, uh, when we return, we'll be talking more with uh, Jean-Jacques Dubois of the Two Star Health and Wellness Clinic. And we'll also want to hear from you. So stick around. Hunters Gathering wants to hear from you, so give us a call. Within the GTA, you can dial 416-872-CP24. That's 416-872-2724. Or from outside the area, call us toll-free at 1-888-863-CP24. You can fax us at 416-593-6397. Or if you're on the Internet, zap your thoughts through cyberspace to hunter at pulse24.com. Welcome back to Hunter's Gatherings. We're talking, we're taking your calls about alternative medicine, and here with me is Jean-Jacques Degois of the True Star Health and Wellness Clinic. Okay, so it comes down to a difference between when it comes to alternative medicine, it's a difference between paying with an OHIP card or or paying with your Visa card. Um, now, of course, that. That has huge implications. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, it, given that we know now, I mean, there's such a body of evidence that, that proves that alternative methods uh, do work. Mm -hmm. um, is it willful blindness on the part of the, or the government, or are they, uh, are they so intent on trying to keep costs down? I mean, there's some sort of a political agenda going on. It's a, it's, it's, it's a very good question. It's also a, um, not so much a controversial issue in naturopathic medicine right now, too, but also on the side of naturopathic medicine, for those of you, well, you've experienced naturopathic medicine, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it's also wanting to make sure the type of medicine we practice is, um, you know, stays intact and pure. Uh, for instance, you know, a first, first visit with a patient is about an hour and a half, right? We're not so much uh, constrained on fees for treatment, it's more about time. So, you know, if somebody comes to you with, you know, say they have headaches, well, then usually it's a bit shorter than somebody who comes to you with bowel problems, uh, migraine headaches, menstrual complaints, uh, very serious illnesses, Crohn's, colitis, uh, arthritis, you know, and then it's a bit more involved, you want to take a detailed family history and so on and so forth. So our concern um, is that the type of medicine we practice isn't jeopardized and that instead of seeing, you know, one patient an hour, which is usually my rate, so I'm, you know, I'm also, you know, I like to talk to you at the same time. Yeah. That's how you get to know your patients and that's how you know, it's the, the whoops out the door syndrome, which I see all the time at the True Start Clinic is, oh, whoops, did I mention that, you know, my cholesterol is high at the door. You know, just okay. an example like that, right? yeah. the whoops out the door. Um, is, um, you know, it's definitely, um, um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, Okay, it's like that. Yeah, it's, it's like, like that. that. But, you know, the other, during the, treatment, too, I lose my trainer. Yeah, no, and the, other, the other big difference I've noticed, of course, is uh, when I go down to uh, uh, your place, uh, True Star, yeah. um, I get to see you. Um, usually yeah. at the time we had agreed upon. Um, and, you know, uh, pardon me for having to say this truth, but uh, when I go to see a specialist uh, at one of the large hospitals, uh, I, I sit down in a room along with a hundred other people, and I usually wait from two to three to maybe, f well, three hours mm -hmm. to get in to see. Now, I often wonder why it is that those, those doctors um, take so long and fall behind schedule. Even if you go in the morning sometimes, it takes hours. Um, and I assume it has something to do with overbooking. Mm -hmm. And that must have something to do with the fact that they're being paid by the government, uh, and the more clients that they have that they process through, they get a fixed amount of money per client. And so I assume something's going on there that is backfiring on us, the the uh, the patients, mm -hmm. with the result that you have to have a lot of patients to be a patient uh, in the regular medical system. Yeah, you know, when I go to deal with the alternative system, there's people actually doing things like we do in television, on schedule. Mm -hmm. um, now, I mean, so you don't overbook? <laughs> uh, no, you know, like I can't really speak for how, how they do things with the specialists in the hospitals and so on. Um, but, but no, you know, it's, it's really designed about um, seeing the patient and taking the time to meet, to meet their needs. Yeah. Um, you know, if somebody needs to see you for 15 minutes, if it's a follow-up, well, then it's a 15-minute follow-up. And if they need an hour and a half, then it's an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, and usually patients know when they're coming back for treatments in terms of, you know, what they need. Is it an acupuncture, is it an IV, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's not, you know, perfect uh, as any clinic. Sometimes you run a bit off schedule, but for the most part, I think we're usually 
Yeah. Are usually on schedule. Well, I, that, that, that's something that's near dear to my heart because I find my time is precious and I wonder why the doctor, as a rule, the establishment doctor can't consider that my time is precious. Um, now, alternative medicine. Like I said earlier, maybe mm -hmm. modern medicine should be called alternative medicine and uh, then the holistic medicine, which has been in some form or other with us since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. um, now, it, 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 I find it very ironic that I can't refer to you as doctor here, even though you spent seven mm -hmm. years learning how to do naturopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. Seven years seems to me to be a fairly long period of time to put in your dues. Um, but we're talking about the, the, the rules uh, as established by the, uh, by the, I guess it's the federal, is, 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 or is it the provincial, uh, provincial. provincial yeah. bureaucracy in this case. Mm -hmm. And again, that seems to reflect a bias. The, um, the, the doctor tells, well, I guess just um, the, the naturopaths are legislated under the Drugless Practitioners Act. Um, we're in the process of lobbying to be registered under the Regulated Health Professions Act, the RHPA, which would give us the doctor designation. Okay. Um, we've been working on that, to my knowledge, since I was enrolled in naturopathic school uh, back in the 90s. So um, I think we're, we're getting headway. I don't believe there's too much objection to the title because, as you say, it's seven years of training. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just for, you know, you're familiar with what we do, but basically how I explain naturopathic medicine to, to people is, Basically, it's science-based medicine, but we treat using natural products, uh, you know, like vitamins, supplements, acupuncture, IV treatments, homeopathy. Yeah. You know, well, so, in, so. In, in addition to natural products, you, you also look at the whole person. Uh, I mean, I know I had to fill out that enormous questionnaire, <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I was happy to do it because I realized that you've got, by rights, you should know about my, my family's medical background and you should know what my psychological habits are and so on and so forth because they all impinge, as opposed to simply saying, oh, you've got a word on your nose, Bob, here's a pill, mm. which is what happens all too often. In fact, that may be what Gail from Toronto is going to talk about in a moment. Gail, uh, you're on air. Go ahead. Hi there. Yes. Um, I was just wondering, uh, I was diagnosed with hepatitis C in 1999, and the uh, doctor said that I had to go on interferon. And I said that I wasn't going to because there was only a 20% chance of um, rehabilitation. And so I didn't do it, and uh, I've been taking Greens Plus and Milk Plus Thistle to clean my liver, and uh, I'm all right. So I'm wondering, uh, okay. did it work, okay. or, uh, you know, uh, I'm fine. I don't have any of the symptoms for hepatitis C. I have a good appetite. Right now I have a bit of a cold, as you can tell from my voice, but what do you think about the naturopathic way of treating hepatitis C? Well, I, I can say, well, this proves my case, but I'm going to pass it over to JJ. Yeah, I would agree with you. I would just say that proves Bob's case. <laughs> that's exactly what I would say. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I think that's wonderful. I think um, what's also different about naturopathic medicine is that in, in this case, it was um, uh, helped with, I think we mentioned two products, but it's not always cookie cutter, you know. In some cases, some things work really well. In other cases, you have to try other things, which is quite nice with the way we do naturopathic medicine. It's very adaptable, you know. Like if we, you know, we go say a certain vitamin or a certain herb, and you know, we're getting we're getting okay results, but we're not getting the results we want. Then we just kind of change gears and we try acupuncture. You know, it's, it gives us lots of um, you know lots of uh, tools in our toolbox to play around with. And, well, yeah, and I think that's what patients like. You know, they like to see that you know there's something that could be done. Yeah, and, and Hep C, of course, is a, is a serious um, medical mm -hmm. ailment. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not talking Mickey Mouse stuff here no, no. whatsoever. Um, another thing that uh, that uh, I mean, apart from the the waiting that goes on when you're dealing with the regular hospital, especially when you're dealing with uh, with, with, with specialists, mm -hmm. uh, which I find offensive and a sign of mass inefficiency at some level. Um, the the, the, the the appealing thing about the naturopathic stuff is, of course, the fact that you are using natural products. And mm -hmm. we've all seen in the news lately how uh, the, the products put out by the big pharmaceutical companies, now they spend billions and billions and billions of dollars on research. That's a given. And they come up with drugs that uh, we would, the rest of us would not have been able to come up with because we can spend the billions. But then they turn around and they spend billions more pushing that particular project. product. Now, what I've noticed over the years is that 
more and more people are becoming self-medicating, mm -hmm. uh, which is perhaps good news because they're taking responsibility for their own health. On the other hand, they're taking their guidance from commercials on television mm -hmm. uh, where, let's face it, there's got to be a corporate bottom line involved in all this. Um, mm -hmm. And, and well, you know, there's some of these products that are natural, pathic, or natural uh, mm -hmm. still, still are made by companies. I don't think there's the same kind of commercial bottom line driven profit seeking uh, syndrome that we find with the big stuff from the multinational pharmaceuticals? Well, I think one of the main reasons for vitamins and supplements um, so on is that, um, you know, um, there's no patent on vitamin C or vitamin B1 okay. or B2 and so on. Yeah. yeah. And this is stuff that's uh, available. It's stuff that's available, you know, yeah. like I, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't really say, but I don't think you're able to patent something that's available in nature. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is a sort of a, a kind of an introduction to uh, naturopathy and homeopathy, and I, I want this is a subject I want to talk about more in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for the moment, we're, we're running out of time. Um, so I think we're going to get on with the the, the next part of the show, uh, and I'm definitely going to have you back again. And I'll and I'll be Thank seeing you. You, I'll be seeing you at the clinic anyway because uh, uh, the stuff you've been doing for me has been helping.